Question number nine says if the system shown in the figure below is set in rotation about each of the axes listed below, find the torque that will produce an angular acceleration of 3.8 radians per second squared in each case. And so what actually happened here was I, I accidentally skipped over question number nine. I've already done question number ten, made a video for it. And part of this, uh, part of this um, math and everything and, and how to do it is actually explained in question 10. The other part's explained in question 8. And so I'm going to go through this as fast as I can. So if you want to understand it better, watch question 8 and question 10 videos. So what you have here is there's, um, there's these four objects and they're connected by a, a very, very light weight rods and they're spinning around the x, y, and z axis. So about the x axis, as I've explained, is, is it means it's rotating this way, which means that the radius about the x axis would be our distance in the y direction. So that it's kind of confusing, but that's what it means. And so rotating about the y axis actually means rotating in this direction. So its radius is the, ra is the distance in the x direction. And then you have this other axis. We'll call it the z-axis. They're calling it O. Um, and it's saying, what if it rotates this way around that axis? So um, spinning like that. So those are the three possibilities. And we're going to try to figure out each one. So it turns out that torque is equal to the mass times the radius squared times the angular acceleration. And so one thing that's interesting is whenever we do like the torque of x equals the mass of x times the radius of x squared times the angular acceleration plus, so this would be part one right here, plus mass two of x plus r two of x uh, times angular, and I don't know why I'm putting plus, this is times. This is times, so time, and then times angular acceleration. What actually happens is all of these um, numbers, the angular acceleration is going to be the exact same on all of them because they're all attached. And so this will factor completely out of the equation. And if we want to know, and it doesn't factor completely out, but what happens is that it goes to, to the outside. So we have mx rx squared plus mx rx squared all these individuals times you take the whole thing times the angular acceleration. Another interesting and simplifying portion of this is that all of the radiuses about the x-axis are the same. So the distance from here to here, and now my drawing isn't to scale, but it is the same as the distance from here to here. And so this radius to this and the radius to this from the x-axis is the same. And the radius from here to here, these are all the same. So we can actually say that all of the radiuses are the same. We can get rid of the x's in here, and we can say that the tension in x is equal to the radius times m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 times the angular acceleration. And we know what all the masses are. We got 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2. So that equals 11 kilograms. So we've got the radius squared times 11 kilograms times the angular acceleration. So I'm just going to write really quick that the sum of the masses is equal to 11 kilograms, and that the radius of the uh, about the x-axis is equal to it. Remember the x-axis it showed a distance of six, so it's going to be half of that. It's going to be equal three meters, and the angular acceleration that we're trying to achieve in all cases is 3.8 radians per second squared. And so we know that our torque in our x-axis, about our x-axis, is equal to 3 times 11 times 3.8, which equals, and actually before you equal that, make sure you, you square the r, so r squared. So r of x squared equals 9. And so this equals 376.2 newton meters uh, of torque. On the, if, if it's all rotating about the x-axis, that's what it's going to equal. 
And so you can plug that in as one of your answers in part A. And then about the y-axis, so the torque in the y-axis, the sum of the masses is going to be the same because the masses don't change. The only thing that changes is the, is the radius. So it's going to equal the radius of y squared times the sum of the masses times the angular acceleration. And so the radius um, squared is going to be 2 squared times 11 times 3.8, and that equals 167.2 newton meters. And so for our, our tension of x, we got 376.2. Our tension of y, or I'm, I'm sorry, not tension, our torque of y. Uh, the, for, the, the force that we need, or rather the, the torque that we need to get the acceleration that we desire in the y-axis is 167.2. And so what about going about the z-axis? And you're going to see in the next video, or actually, I'm, so, I'm sorry, it's in, in video number eight, you'll see that you can just add these together. And I show you mathematically why, but you can just add these two together, and you'll get the torque that you need in the z-axis for the same exact thing. So the torque in the z-axis is 543.4 newton meters. So that's adding these two together.